Aloha and welcome to Island Spirit Yoga with Julie and Howie guiding you through some nice gentle practice today. Again, it will be a shorter practice, just about an hour and 10 minutes. So let's get started. Let's come into a comfortable seat, whatever that means for you. You can sit on a bolster, a block, legs extended, anything goes. And just close your eyes and gaze inward at your heart once again. Maybe you take the time to start to roll through the neck and the shoulders, or roll the shoulders forward up, back and down. Just allow the elbows to hang out right underneath the shoulders. Palms face down for grounding, palms facing skyward for energy, or perhaps one of each. Connecting the thumb and the index finger together, into the mudra of infinite wisdom. As we begin to filter the breath in and out through the nose without too much effort. Perhaps take a nice deep breath in through the nostrils, a soft exhalation through the mouth, and keep the jaw super soft and slack, a relaxed tongue touching the roof of the mouth. As we filter the breath in and out through the nose, as we exhale, contracting the navel towards the spine as we gently push all the breath up and out. And as we inhale, we invite fresh new energy to expand our lower belly, impregnating us full of life force. As we exhale, contracting the navel towards the spine as we gently push all the breath up and out. Again, inhale deep down into the lower belly, into the rib cage, into the heart, all the way up to the shoulders. As we exhale, the breath will leave the shoulders, the heart, the rib cage, and the navel contracts towards the spine. Again, inhaling a seamless breath through both nostrils, into the lower belly as it rises all the way up to the shoulders. And as you exhale, the breath will leave the shoulders, the heart, the rib cage contracts, and the navel presses towards the spine. Just continue to ebb and flow, inhaling from the bottom all the way up to the top. And as you exhale, the breath will descend from the shoulders all the way back down towards the bottom. Allow the breath to become a little bit more seamless, a little deeper full of intention and integrity. Our breath work, our pranayama, is our primary fo focus. Allowing the breath to remain this calm, this steady, this peaceful throughout the duration of our flow today. So exhale entirely. And inhale for five, four, three, two, and then exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale into the lower belly, into the rib cage into the heart, all the way up to the shoulders. And now exhale, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Last round, inhale for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inviting the hands together into Anjali Mudra. As the thumbs nestle right in front of Anahata, your heart center. As we take time to reflect on at least three things that we're grateful for today. Thus far, releasing dopamine back into our system and attracting more of what we're grateful for as we reverently bow our foreheads down to our heart, and we take time to set our intention for our journey inward. Mm. We 
then inhale, open up your eyes, walk your hands forward, and enjoy seated forward fold. So again, you can swoosh from side to side, you can curl your heart forward and wash it forward. I'm just going to hit play for the music. directly underneath the shoulders, move the crown of the head up towards the sky. TP out through the fingers, so if you can think that you have beautiful flowers underneath your hands and you don't want to crush them, roll the shoulders forward up, back and down. Pull the rib cage back in, engage Mula Bandha, so it's drawing up through the sex organs, anal sphincter, and drawing the navel towards the spine. Exhale, and as we inhale, root down to rise up, sweeping your heart, your head, your hands, all the way up to Sky. And as we exhale, chin melts into the chest and we wings bend our arms far back behind our shoulders. Again, inhale. I always visualize me drawing a healing bubble of love, of light, of protection around my vessel. And then as we exhale, chin melts into the chest and we redraw that big circle around our body. This time, inhale, allow the hands to pause shoulder width apart. And we pivot our heart towards our right as the left hand embraces the right knee. Reach for the moon, and then as you exhale, watching your right hand float behind your tailbone. So it can be like a second spinal column, or perhaps you can kind of bow forward and sweep that left hand to that right hip inner thigh, or perhaps you're in half lotus and you can embrace that left foot. Right, so we inhale, we pull length, and then we exhale, taking the navel, the heart, the gaze back behind us. Again, inhale, lifting up, exhale, twisting. Inhale, lift, exhale, twist. Inhale, lift, exhale, twist. So maintain that. Now see if the chin can come into alignment with your sternum. And then wash your left ear towards your shoulder. Maybe you nod your nose forward and back, just opening up through perhaps the inner ear all the way down into the scalenes. Maybe the nose needs to draw skyward and downward. Just breathing in and breathing out. Make sure both shoulders are sliding down the back body. Keep the jaw nice and soft. Just close your eyes and go inward. Discover where you're holding on. Letting go of any pain in the neck. And then inhale, sweep the crown of the head up towards the sky. Pivot all 10 fingers back up towards the sky as you inhale. And then as you exhale, we extend the arms back out and down towards the earth. Pick the kneecaps up wider than your mat. Okay, so your heels are no longer on your sticky mat. Heel the hand close to the booty. And then just simply windshield away for your feet or your knees from side to side. Breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. Good, inhale, neutralize and recross your legs in the most unnatural way. And that will definitely be the opposite. So here we go again, inhaling, drawing that healing bubble around your vessel, hands are shoulder width apart. Pivot off to your left as your right hand embraces the knee. Inhale, reach for the moon. Exhale, watch your left hand float back behind you. Either the hand is directly on the earth behind the tailbone, or again, you can bow forward from the hip and try to embrace the inner right thigh. Make sure both shoulders are sliding down the back body. Inhale, climb up the ladder of the spinal column. And then as we exhale, taking the navel, the heart, and the gaze over the left shoulder. Same with your breath. Every time we inhale, we pull length. Every time we exhale, we twist. One more time, just like this. And then if you desire, chin comes into alignment with the sternum as the right ear this time floats down to the shoulder. Keep your right arm straight and maybe nudge that nose forward and back. Just let it feel oh so good. <sighs> exhale through the mouth at any time. Feel like you're holding on, just purifying, breathing in to breathe out. And then 
and inhale, sweep the crown of the head back up towards the sky. Release the hands back up towards the ceiling. The palms unite into Anjali Mudra, a prayer, as the thumbs travel down the center of your body. Draw yourself up onto your hands and knees, one way or another. Okay, and make sure that your hands are directly underneath your shoulders, knees directly underneath the hips. Point your toes back behind you and just begin to sway the hips from side to side, adding a watery element into the practice. Breathing in and breathing out. And then allow your right hip to float back to the back right corner of your room and then forward and the left hip to the back left corner of the room and then forward. So essentially we're making and creating figure eights on the earth. And I feel it really deep down into my hip flexors. You might feel it in a different area, just let it feel good. And then allow that to come to a standstill. Push into the shins, round through the back into your catch and into the chest. Inhale, melt the heart down, pull it through the gateway of the shoulders, gaze up at the ceiling. Exhale, push into the shins, drive the navel towards the sky, bubble up to the back of the heart. Again, inhaling, lifting up. This time as we exhale, we round to the back and allow the hips to lower all the way down onto the heels. Exhale, exhale, exhale. Just the inhale, stacking the shoulders back on top of the wrists, scooping the heart, spreading the sits bones nice and wide. And then as we exhale, rounding through the back, chin into the chest, descending all the way back down. Again, just like that, inhale, hips back on top of the knees, scoop the heart, the gaze up towards the sky. Exhale, rounding through the back, descending the hips all the way down. This time, keep your elbows, your forearms on the earth. Inhale, stack shoulders on top of the elbows, pull and draw shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, round to the back, push into your palms, straight arms, slide through back. Again, inhale, shoulders back right on top of the wrists, scoop your heart, your gaze up, pull the shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, bubble up through the back of the heart and push into the palms. Inhale, draw yourself up, straight arms this time. Tuck your toes under, extend right leg back behind you, okay, drop right hip within internal rotations. Pick right heel up, hip height. Okay. Stand left arm forward, gaze down at the earth, left arm up towards the sky. Breathing in, breathing out, draw the shoulders and the right foot back behind you. Left fingertips and crown of the head forward, balancing out your neural muscular system. Okay. Left and right hemispheres of the brain. Inhale here, exhale, contract left elbow towards left hip flexor, right knee towards your tricep. Inhale, full length. Exhale, contract. Inhale, full length. Exhale, contract. One more. Inhale, full length. Exhale, contract. Inhale, full length. Release left hand back down onto the earth. Pick right heel up. Okay, inhale, exhale. At first, we'll kiss the right knee, rounding through the back. Inhale, sweep right leg high. Exhale, bend the elbows out to the side, elbows up towards the sky. Inhale, harness your energy. Exhale, push up, forehead and knee connect. Again, inhale, sweep high, keep right leg lifted. Maybe this time the elbows shave the side body like chaturanga arms. Inhale, pause. Exhale, push up, forehead and knee connect. Two more times. You decide what you want to do with your arms. Inhale, lift. Exhale, bend. Inhale, pause. Exhale, push up. Forehead and knee connect. One more time. Inhale, lift. Exhale, bend. Inhale, pause. Exhale, push up. Forehead and knee connect. Extend right leg back behind you. Bend right heel towards your gluteal. Sweep left hand back to capture the inside arch of that right foot. Take right foot up towards the sky. Draw right knee in towards the midline and kick right foot back behind you and feel your heart propel high towards the sky. And then unlike rubber band, we release. We extend that right leg back. We cartwheel right heel behind left heel, right? Standing on the outside perimeter of that right foot. Right hand arrives onto your hip flexor. Right arm extends up towards the sky. Pivot right hand in front of you and swirl it on top of your right ear. 
okay? I want you to use your core and your obliques and mula bandha. Inhale, tipi out through the left fingertips, keep rolling your heart up towards the sky, and then extend the left arm up as though you're holding on to a big ball of energy. Inhale, exhale, two more. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, left hand comes down. Right hand reaches forward. Pivot onto the ball of the right foot, step back to a plank position. Bear pose, down dog. Feel free to pedal through one knee at a time. Spiral up onto the balls of the feet. Do whatever you need to do. And then inhale, flowing back down onto your hands and knees. Hands directly underneath the shoulders. Toes are tucked under. Extend left leg back behind you. Drop left hip down. Pick left heel up, hip high, using your core. Zipper up through the front body so that you're streamlined. And then extend the right arm forward. Pull shoulders and left heel back. Right fingertips, crown the head forward. Inhale here, exhale, contract. Inhale, pull length. Exhale, use your core, bubble out through the back of the heart. Inhale, pull length. Exhale, contract. Inhale, pull length. Exhale, contract. Let's do one more. Inhale, grow long. Exhale, inhale, pull length. Right hand comes underneath the right shoulder. Kick left leg high towards the sky as we inhale. Exhale, at first let's kiss that left knee, bubble out through the back of the heart. Inhale, sweep left leg high, keep it lifted. Exhale, bend the elbows. Inhale, pause. Exhale, push up. Forehead and knee connect. Again, inhale, lift everything you've got up. Exhale, bend the elbows, inhale, pause. Exhale, push up, forehead and knee connect. Inhale, lift left leg high. Exhale, bend, inhale, pause. Exhale, push up, forehead and knee connect. Send left leg back behind you, beckon left heel towards the booty, and sweep right hand back to embrace the inside arch of that left foot. Now kick that left foot high, draw the left knee in towards the midline. Pick the heart up, and then very slowly release. Left leg straightens, tuck left toe under, pivot left heel behind right tuck toe. Okay, left hand comes onto your hip flexor. Roll the shoulders away from the ears. Sweep left hand high towards the sky. Extend left hand in front of you. Pivot left arm on top of the ear. Okay, TV out through the right fingertips. Inhale, exhale, pick right hand up. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Right hand comes down, left hand comes down. Pivot onto the ball of the left foot, step back to a plank position. Bear pose, down dog. So your feet are hip width apart. We're going to bend the knees, bear pose, down dog, keep pumping it open like this. Bend the knees, they're spring-loaded and straighten. If down dog is not appropriate for you, for some reason, just come into a puppy pose. Resting the forehead on the earth, keeping the hips stacked right on top of the knees, okay? And then we all get to flow back down onto our hands and knees. Shave the side body with the elbows, eight points of contact. Untuck the toes, stand on the pubic bone, hip bone, inhale, Bhujangasana. Exhale, wash your forehead back down. From here, TP out through the fingers once again, right onto the woody area. Forehead relaxes onto the earth. Like you're crushing a can in between the shoulder blades, elbows stay skyward. Wash right ear towards shoulder, inhale, sweep crown of the head up towards the sky. Roll left ear towards left shoulder. Allow the forehead to come back to the midline of your sticky mat. Inhale to the left and up. Exhale to the right and down. Inhale to the right and up. Exhale to the left and down. One more. Inhale to the left and up. Exhale to the right. Release the arms, like in Kalyasana arms or a cactus petroglyph, and just relax one of your facial cheeks onto the earth. 
feel rooted and grounded. As you inhale, observe how your body rises. And as you exhale, just descend and melt into the support of the earth. Soften through the jaw, the shoulders, the armpits, as though you're breathing through your armpits. Pick the head up and go ahead, gaze in the opposite direction. Just pause and breathe. Good, hands back underneath the shoulders. Push your body back up onto your hands and knees. Good, this time draw your kneecaps together, okay? Walk your hands directly in front of your shoulders. Kneecaps and heels are together. We're going to walk our hands off to the left and as far back as we possibly can. We're going to inhale, stack the shoulders on top of the wrist, and as we exhale, that left gluteal kisses that right heel. Inhale, pulse back up. Exhale, pulse it down. Inhale, pulse back up. Exhale, pulse down. One more time, just like this. Inhale, pulsing up. Exhale and stay down unless you love the pulsing. Relax your forehead on your left knee. Perhaps embrace that left wrist with the right hand. And again, spread through the whole left side into the intercostal muscles. Walk your hands forward. Draw yourself up onto your hands and knees once again. This time we get to tuck the toes under, all 10 toes. And we descend our hips onto our heels. So my little pinky toe needs a little assistance too. It doesn't want to get gypped out. So we're opening up over 50 acupressure points in our feet. So it can feel like poison at first. If it absolutely hurts your knees, you can always root down and rise up onto the knees into a kneeling. Otherwise, just deal with it, right? Fingertips down towards the earth, it just gets better. Inhale, we're gonna spend the arms away and up towards the sky. So now the left hand comes behind the right and you clap your hands together. Inhale, pull as long as you possibly can. Exhale, pendulum off to your left. Inhale, lift back up. Exhale, to your right. Inhale up, exhale to the left. Inhale up, exhale to the right. Inhale up, interlace your fingers, draw the knuckles forward, downward, into the heart. And let's see what happens. Maybe the arms straighten and maybe not. Washing the left ear towards the shoulder, chin walks into the chest, to the right, and up. To the left, to the right, and up. Release the hands forward, right? And maybe you need to shake out your feet. From here, toes are pointed back, so you can see this way. And you'll descend the hips back down onto the heels. So this time the toes are pointed. Hands underneath the shoulders, opening up through the tops of the feet. Project the kneecaps up towards the sky. Maybe one hand at a time comes onto the knees. Maybe the hands come together into Anjali Mudra. Or perhaps the hands come underneath the shoulders and you pick the hips up, knees up towards the sky, rounding through the back. Like we're just walking around on our toe now. Right? And then release. Walk the hands forward once again. Knees directly underneath the hips. So I'll show you in this direction. So now we're going to walk our hands off to our right. So the opposite direction. Inhale, stack the shoulders on top of the wrist. Exhale, allowing the hips to float down towards that left heel. And then inhale, back up. Exhale, and pulse it down. Again, inhale up, so you should feel it in the low back releasing. 
perhaps in the right hip and down. One more time, inhale, stack the shoulders on top of the wrist. This time the right gluteal literally kisses that left heel. Try not to collapse all the way down. See if you can embrace that right wrist with the left hand and spread through the rib cage on the left side. Remember, you can always pulse the armpit and the heart up towards the sky and allow it to descend back down towards the earth. Just breathing in and breathing out, releasing. Just hold it here. And then walk the hands forward once again, drawing yourself back up onto your hands. Good, again, tuck those toes under, allow the hips to lower all the way down onto the heels. Help out that pinky toe once again, okay? Sit heavy onto those heels. Fingertips down towards the earth. Inhale, sweeping your heart, your head, your hands up. This time the right hand behind the left. Clap your hands together. Inhale, lift high. Exhale, pendulum off to your right. Inhale, left. Exhale to the left. Inhale up, zipper up through the front body. Exhale to the right. Inhale up, exhale to the left. Inhale up, interlace those fingers. Draw the knuckles forward, down, present them into the heart, and ta-da, let's see what happens with the arms. Slide the shoulders down the back body, wash the right ear towards the shoulder, chin into the chest, to the left, back. To the right, down, to the left and up. Release those hands, shake out those feet if you need to. Shake, 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 shake. Tuck the toes under, blossom into another bear position and then into a down dog. Spread your feet as wide as your mat, root your heels into the earth and swish your hips from side to side. Like a happy human. Slowly come back down onto the hands and knees. Untuck the toes, eight points of contact. Inhale, Bhujangasana. Exhale, wash your forehead down. So this next round, we're going to use two blocks. If you don't have blocks, don't worry about it. Just pretend. There's one block, and here's the other block. So one block's going to be right in front of us. The other block, we're going to take it and squeeze it in between our calf muscles. And then lower our feet back down onto the earth. Refrain from dropping your block, or at least try not to. And think about the legs being really straight, coming into Salambhasana. And even picking the kneecaps up off the earth. We're going to be working our erector spinae, our back muscles, okay? So in order to have a strong core, we need a strong back. And then your right hand is going to embrace your block as your forehead relaxes on the earth. At first, we pick up the legs nice and straight like this, and then pick our heart and our arms up. And then extend the arms out with the block in the right hand, then exchange it into the left, and there's in the way, and then forward. And to the right and back, to the left and forward. To the right and back, to the left and forward. Right and back, left and pause. Left and back, right and forward. Left and back, right and forward. Left and back, right and forward. Last one. Left and back, right and forward. And relax. Two breaths here. Maybe a flubber breath out through the mouth. AKA unicorn breath. Just let it all go. Okay, send your arms forward. You can kind of feel your calves squeeze that block again as your legs lift up. And then lift your arms up. Spread straight legs nice and wide. Always kind of visualize them parachuting as the elbows come towards my ankles. And then inhale, pull in. Exhale, they're like yoga jumping jacks. Inhale, exhale, five, four, three, Two, last one, and relax. Maybe shake your tail feather from side to side. 
underneath the shoulders. Push your body up onto your hands and knees. From here, you might want to utilize that block that's right in between your calves as we come into Virasana. So the knees draw together. Heels are wider than the hips. You embrace your calf muscle and roll it away from the midline. And see if you can slither those sits bones down onto the inside of the heels. All 10 toes need to be pointing back behind you. If they're kind of tweaked out to the side, you're going to eventually hurt your knees and we don't want that. So from here, let's try to have a neutral spine. A neutral spine is a nice curvature in the lower lumbar and in the neck, okay? So rolling on to the front of the pubic bone. Tap your hands onto your knees, okay? I visualize I'm riding a horse or a dolphin or a unicorn or something. So here we go. We're going to ride whatever we choose to ride. Roll onto the front of the pubic bone. Slide the elbows into the side body. Slide the shoulders down the back and create an underbite. And then as we exhale, create a C with the torso like in the alphabet. If you release your hands, you would just topple, topple back. Inhale, roll onto the front of the pubic bone. Slide the shoulders down. Exhale, bubble out through the back of the heart. Again, inhale, curl the heart high, elbows down, chin up towards the sky. Exhale, round. One more time. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, round. Inhale, neutralize. You can either stay here, relaxing the left palm up towards the sky in your thighs, and then the right palm, and connecting the thumb. Closing the eyes and just sitting here breathing, observing sensation without judgment. Otherwise, the fingertips towards your toes. Don't let the booty lift up. Keep it rooted even if you're sitting on a block. Okay? And then begin to guide your heart forward. You see the little V in your knees? That's where your nose is going to slide in between. So take your time. I remember the days that the only thing that moved forward was my head keeping the hips really heavy, visualizing sitting on your low back. are on top. Knees are still perpendicularly stacked on top of the knees, toes are tucked under. So I want you to think you could tear your mat in two. So scoop the sits bones up towards the sky, call this a pike. Okay, toes are tucked under, now push your mat away and see if your heart and your chin can come all the way down onto the earth. It's a really nice deep shoulder opening, heart opening, throat opening. Stay with your breath. Push your mat away. If it's too intense, just slide your knees back a little bit. Only if your heart and your chin are on the earth, you get to pick the kneecaps up off the floor. Then slowly lower, and then we all slide into a sphinx position, stacking the shoulders right on top of the elbows. So now the elbows are slightly in front of the shoulders, we release our hands. We tug the elbows towards our waistline and feel the clavicle get nice and broad. Breathing in, breathing out, then we get to straighten out through our arms. Standing on our pubic bone, becoming really, really light through the arms, right? Using our back to hold us up. And then exhale, wash the forehead down. Hands underneath the shoulders, push yourself up onto your hands and knees. Either retreat into an extended child pose 
or Vajrasana, just sitting on the heels, neutralizing through the spine, whatever feels best for you. Okay. And then inhale, let's all come in Vajrasana, or diamond pose, and then arrive into a kneeling position. So we're not gonna do a lot of standing work today, just a lot of kneeling and opening up, rolling around on the floor. You may need a block and you may not. So from here, we're going to come into Parigasana, a gate pose, with the left leg straight, similar to Trikonasana, triangle pose in a way, because we're really going to deepen this hip flexor on that left side. So try to keep your left leg straight, engage through the quadricep muscle. You might have to play around with either the right foot forward or back, or even a micro bend in the right knee. Today, just try to keep that left foot pointed out and not forward unless you absolutely need to. There's lots of different schools of thumbs for all of the poses, so you choose. So from here, your left hand comes onto your quadricep, right arm up towards the sky. Engage. Now, take that pubic bone on the left side and draw it up towards your navel. Okay, I already feel it in the groin. And then start to slide your left arm down and extending the right arm on top of the ear and looking up at the fingertips. Visualize that you're leaning against the wall and you really wanna get that right gluteal back onto the wall too and take more of that left sit bone up towards your shoulder. Breathing in and breathing out. Parigasana, our gate pose. All tongue tied today. La, la, la. Inhale, sweeping the head back up towards the sky. Good, from here, we're going to cartwheel that right hand down nice and slow underneath the shoulder. Okay, stacking the shoulders and the hands on top of each other, and then extending that left arm on top of the ear. Flexing through your left foot, pick left heel up hip high. Good, back in the heel to bend, sweeping the hand in front of you, left hand, and embracing the outside perimeter of the foot. Now kick into the foot again, feel your heart propel up towards the sky. For some reason, I feel like I'm an ice skater, just going gracefully. I have a wonderful fantasy life. <laughs> and then slowly inhale, extension. Good, and then come back up. Good, draw the hands together. So from here, we're going to bend through that left knee, left toes pointed towards out to the left. Okay, so we're gonna feel our subtle body. So allow our hands to come together and create friction as though we have incense in between our palms and it's just going to combust on fire. But really we're opening up energy points in our palms and just start to play around with it. Start to feel that energetic pull, right? How far can you distance the hands? Can you feel the energy? The subtle body connect before the physical body. Okay? Just acknowledging you're a lot larger than your physical body. So playing around with that energy, we're going to exude that beautiful energy out through our wings and really bend through that left knee. And then we'll pull it all back in. Try to feel it first, energetic, and then physical. And then again, find more of a diagonal and then pull it back in. Again, kind of like Virapadrasana 2, Warrior 2, looking over that left finger and then pull it back in. This next time we're going to hold it. Okay, so settle the shoulders down the back body. Good. Squeeze an imaginary can in between the shoulder blades, look over your left middle finger. Now take that left pubic bone closer towards your shoulder, feel it. And then allow your left forearm to come down in front of the knee, not to relax, to push it back so that your heart propels up towards the sky as you open up the temple doors and really back in that knee to bend. A few more breaths here, breathing in and breathing out. And now slowly allow that left hand to come down onto the inside of the foot. This is when you may like a block underneath your hand. So from here, the left shoulder and the knee push together. So once again, you're taking that sits bone on the left side up towards the sky. And then allow that right hand to come in front of you. Slowly float on top of the ear for a modified side angle pose, Parsvokanasana. Breathing in, breathing out. Keep 
push it into the shoulder and the knee, and then sweep that hand back up towards the sky. This time, you're gonna pull the booty way back. So I'll show you a different perspective. So that right hand is still up towards the sky. And then we're going to thread that left arm underneath our hamstring, reach it back. Both arms reach back behind you, try to embrace that right wrist, okay? You can always hold on to a strap as well. And then draw that right arm straight. Slide the shoulder down the back body and look up towards the ceiling. Breathing in, breathing out. Really launch the pubic bone closer towards the floor. Stay with your breath. And slowly release. Left hand back underneath the shoulder. Right hand back up towards the sky. Sweep the crown of the head up. And the arms extend back out to the side. So just pull your body back up. Okay. So from here, we'll reverse it. Right hand comes onto the hip. Left palm flips skyward. Go ahead, launch those hips down, and then sweeping that left arm above the head. Pushing the hips towards the earth, and then maybe that right hand comes down onto the earth. But not so much that you have to pull the hips back, right? Keep allowing the groin to grow closer towards the earth. And then sweeping that left hand down, hands back up, inhale. Exhale, thumbs draw in front of the heart center. Pray the hands down underneath the shoulders. Straighten out through the right leg, kicking the right toes up towards the sky. Spiral left heel in front of the groin. And then come all the way down onto your sits bones, the earth. So if you need to roll up a blanket or sit on a bolster, you can. Left heels in front of the groin. For now, we'll just walk the hands forward, shoulder width apart. Maybe you wanna swoosh from side to side. Keeping that left foot flex, eventually you might become like a pancake, and just flat on the earth. And then take the hands back underneath the shoulders, towards the sky. From here, let's see if the left form can descend down in front of your engaged quadricep. If not, don't fret, just keep the arm nice and straight. But the reason why we have the elbow come down is so that we have something to push into, which is our leg, so that our heart spirals up towards the sky, okay? So if you can continue to maintain the swirling of the heart up towards the sky, Go ahead, slide your left hand down to embrace your flex foot, okay? Keep pushing the elbow into the shin though so that your heart rolls high. Right hand up towards the sky. So some days this is my edge, right? This is as far as I can go with being able to breathe. Otherwise, let's see if we can beckon that right elbow to bend, touch the nape of the neck. So I'm a big mover and shaker in my poses. You might just wanna stay static and still. Otherwise, the right elbow comes down to kiss the left knee. And then inhale, roll up and back. Exhale, roll down. Inhale, roll up and back. And then back down. And then back up. So you can maintain that pulsing. Otherwise, the right arm extends on top of the ear. Maybe, just maybe, you can embrace the outside perimeter of your flex left foot. Maybe you're like, Julie, my shoulder girdle kind of hurts and I want to create big circles with my right arm. Okay, so you're always free to move as you need to, to open, to find your intelligent edge. Maybe you spiral the other direction, right? Maybe that left hand comes onto the knee. Just stay with your breath. And then inhale, come up. Wash your forehead down towards your right knee. And then sweep the head back up towards the sky. The same way we descended, we will elevate. So come back up your own way. Knee comes underneath the hips. And then we begin to jump rope through our spinal column. Column. Like it's a jump rope. And then opposite direction, Ugh. 
Feels so good. And then inhale, roll up and chin you in position. Let's do the same sequence on the other side. So let's extend the right leg this time towards the right wall. Just like Trikonasana, you're going to disco shift your hips off to the left. So you can see how I have a deeper hip flexor crease. And then take that right pubic bone up towards your shoulder. Engage through the quadricep, right hand on top of the quad, left arm extends up towards the sky as we slide into our gate pose. Looking up at our left fingertips, keeping the quadricep nice and engaged. Breathing in and breathing out. Keep scooping the pubic bone closer towards the navel. And then inhale, sweep the head up. Slowly allow that left hand to come down underneath the shoulder. Slide the shoulders down the back body. Sweeping the right arm up towards the sky and then on top of the ear. Side angle, again, take time to take the pubic bone in towards the navel. Flex through that right foot and pick it up, hip height. Sweep right hand in front of you, back in the knee to bend as you embrace the outside perimeter of the foot. Again, kick into the foot, roll the heart open, slide the shoulders away from the ears, and breathe. Very slowly, release, hand up towards the sky. Extend right leg, cartwheel, heel down, head up. Hands come together in deep, deep gratitude. So now we bend the right knee. Again, feel your energetic body. So extend the arms out like wings, like Virapadrasana too, and pull it all back in. It's a give and take. Extension. Pull it all in. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, we'll hold it here. Soften the shoulders, engage through the quadriceps, uh, uh, rhomboid muscles behind the heart, pull the rib cage back in, and now that right forearm comes down in front of the knee. And then open up, push that knee way back, roll your heart higher towards the sky. Rebend that left knee even more, staying with your breath, and then slowly slide that right hand down. Extend left arm in front of you. Pivot it on top of the ear for a soft variation of Parsvo Konasana, our side angle pose. Keep pushing the knee and the shoulder together. Continue to take the right side of the rib cage higher towards the sky. You can stay here, otherwise the arm comes up, you plug the booty way back behind you. You thread your right arm underneath your hamstring. You sweep the left arm back, inhale, exhale, roll your heart up towards the sky. Pull that left arm nice and straight and breathe. And then slowly release. Left arm up towards the sky. Inhale, sweep the crown of the head up towards the ceiling. Hands come back together into a prayer. Left hand pushes the hips towards the right. And then your right arm extends to reverse and extend that right arm towards the left. Maybe the hand comes down onto a block or onto the earth, and look up at your right fingertips. Stay with your breath. And then go ahead, draw your back up. Hands back up. And then pray it down. Hands underneath the shoulders, right leg straightens. Pivot left heel in front of the groin and then allow the hips to slowly come behind the heel. Again, get comfortable. Make sure that that right sit bone is on the floor. It's pretty common that it pops up here, especially when we forward fold. So just enjoy the opening. Maybe you feel it on the inside here. Staying with your breath. Maybe swoosh from side to side. Keep the hands back underneath the shoulders, sweep the head back up towards the sky. Your right toes are still flexed towards your hip, quadricep is nice and engaged. Let's see if that right form can come down in front of your engaged quad. 
push into it, right? Maybe root down through that left hip. Maybe the hand can embrace the inside arch and maybe no way, Jose. It's all perfect. Sweep the hand up towards the sky. Maybe you stay here, just waving towards the sky. Maybe beckon the elbow to bend. Inhale, exhale, pivot down. Inhale, roll, wide open. Exhale, pivot it back down. Inhale, open up. Exhale, down. You can continue that, right? Maybe you want to explore. Maybe that left hand embraces that right foot. Maybe that right hand comes onto the left knee. Just think for a moment. Close your eyes and visualize the back of your heart resting on top of your right knee. That's how open you are. Right? That's how expansive you are. Do what you need to do to set yourself free. This is all about you. You can be shamelessly selfish at this moment. Re-nurture your mind, your body, and your spirit. And then inhale, sweep the head back up towards the sky. Bow your forehead down to the left knee. And sweep the head back up towards the ceiling. Good. So from here, we're going to extend our legs nice and long and forward. Shake them out. So from here, let's bend our knees and draw our feet hip width apart. Fingertips towards our heels, but the hands slide behind our shoulders. Okay? We're going to slide our hips towards our heels and pick the hips up. Shoot your tailbone in between the knees and blossom your heart up towards the sky. Breathing in and breathing out. Lower the booty, pick the booty up. Just two more like this, lower and lift, lower, and lift. This time, push into the heels, straight legs, propel the hips back in between your hands. From here, we're gonna come into Paschimottanasana. So sometimes it's nice to sit on a blanket, roll up your mat, so that you can sit on it. And if you could visualize that you're sliding down a slide, so now your pubic bone is closer towards the earth, and you definitely have a neutral spine. Maintaining a nice straight spine, flex your feet, inhale, sweep your heart, your head, your hands all the way up towards the sky, and then as you exhale, hinge from the hip flexor and forward fold. Wherever your hands land, that's perfect, it's whole, and it's complete. So if your hands land onto your knees, brava, you're doing great. Just refrain from rounding through the back, allow your heart to guide you, slide the shoulders further down the back body. If necessary, you can always place a block or two in between the knees and relax the forehead. Maybe your legs aren't long enough and you prefer to use a block as an extension of your legs. Just slide the shoulders down. Sometimes I like to grip my feet with my fingertips facing the earth so I pull all 10 toes back and the elbows come down and I slide the shoulders away from my ears and you engage through your quadricep muscles. Release the hands, walk your hands up the length of your strong legs, sweeping the crown of the head back up towards the sky. Good, from here, we'll inchworm towards the top of our mat. And let's use our blocks again. Okay. So, I'll angle like this, and we'll just descend all the way down onto the earth. This time, we'll use a little bit of our uh, a lot of our core to make this happen. So the knees are directly on top of the hip bones. Again, right hand has our block. Back too close to the mirror. Okay, and then our arms extend up overhead. We crunch up, we lift our shoulders, the back of our heart up, and then we allow the left hand to embrace the block and come back above the head. And every time the block comes behind our hamstrings, we crunch up a little bit more. And five, four, three, two, and one, and reverse it, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Good, hug 
the knees into the heart. Take the block in between the calves, okay, or the quadriceps, whatever you feel better with. Heels directly on top of the hip bones, hands behind the head, okay, supporting the head. Now the right hand touches outside perimeter of that left foot, and then back, and then to the right, and left, and right, and left. Spread your feet wider than your mat. Feel the sacrum spread out. It's like your battery pack, that sacral bone right above the tailbone. If it's ever congested, it's hard to get the energy flowing up and down through the shishuna, like the super highway of our energetic body, our chakra system. Okay, so from here, draw your feet directly underneath your knees. Fingertips towards your heels. Okay, push into the back of the head, lift the heart, slide the shoulders down, and stand on your own two feet and lift the hips and thighs up off the floor. Breathing in, breathing out. Interlace your fingers, press your forearms into the earth. Okay, this is one of my favorites. I'll probably say that about all the poses. But we release our hands. Now that right hand comes underneath your back. Can I see my right hand here? So you can either embrace your left bicep or just let it come somewhere close, okay? So we're slowly, slowly allow the kidneys, the low back, to come down on top of our right forearm. Our hips come down. If it's too much, just stand on your feet and allow the hips to lift up. Make sure that right shoulder is sliding down the back body. And then extend your legs forward. And then wash your left ear towards the earth. Maybe you feel the neck and the shoulders open. Bring the nose back up towards the sky. Bend your knees. Reroot your feet into the earth. Lift the hips up. Extend my right arm. Left arm gets to bend this time behind the low back. Allow the kidneys to lower onto the forearm. Make sure that left shoulder is rolling down your back, far away from the ear. See if your legs will extend forward. And then wash the right ear towards the earth. So hopefully you can feel it from the inner ear all the way deep down into the scalenes, right? Maybe you need to wash your head from side to side. And maybe you don't feel it at all. arms through the inside of the legs to reach for the outside perimeter of the feet. So it's not about like, yeah, I got my feet. It's about keeping your tailbone on the earth so that the spine is super long. So if you need to just hold on to the shins or behind the knees, go for it. Otherwise, push that tailbone into the earth. Allow the knees to drop closer towards the earth. Maybe rock from one side. Massaging those kidneys. Sometimes I visualize I'm riding a tricycle again. It'd be quite hilarious. Feels good. Maybe you take one leg and you straddle it out to the side. Kind of like a Russian dancer, right? How do they do that? Maybe you smile both legs wide open, getting the toes on the earth. 
pushing the backs of the knees up towards the sky, doing whatever you need to do. And then take the knees back into the heart, sweep your forearms around your shins, feel those hip flexors. So take your knees as close to your heart as you possibly can. Push the sits bones into the earth. Good, and then reroute the feet back into the floor. So let's see if this will work for you today. Just a little fun. So again, we'll come back up into our half bridge pose, Satyupandasana. See if you can come up onto your tippy toes and lift the hips so high that you can place your hands underneath your kidneys. Do you see how my fingers are wrapping around my waist, right? And then it's kind of effortless to kick one leg up towards the sky, if not back. Just see if this works for you today, and then back up, okay? So we have accurate self-assessment of how this feels. Come up onto the tippy toes and release the hands. If your wrists hurt, just roll through them. If that didn't work for you today, you can either hold this 90 degree position and wedge a little block underneath your sacrum again. So the legs are tall, you can even use the strap and the elbows onto the earth to keep them comfortably erect up towards the sky. Otherwise, we're gonna be flipping back and forth from Halasana into Satubandasana. So I'll show you. So once again, head into the earth, legs up towards the sky first. Push into the palms, project the feet back behind you. Good, just hold it here into your plow pose for a few breaths. Feeling that nice dynamic stretch from your tippy toes to your hips. Maybe drop the knees into the outside perimeter of the ears and wrap your arms behind the knees. Maybe you can even thread your hands underneath your head, becoming a little glove. Okay. So you can either hold wherever you're at, otherwise the thumbs are in towards the midline of your spine. The other fingers are wrapping around the waist. You lift the right leg, come into like a split, right knee bends, and then the right toes touch the earth, and then the left knee does the same thing. Now we'll reverse it. Right leg comes up, and you step back, step back. Hold it, thumbs into the midline, left leg high, bend for the knee, rock forward. Maybe both legs. We get to come down. We come into Supta Baddha Konasana, drawing the soles of our feet together. Left hand is on the heart, right hand is onto the lower belly. Take a nice deep breath in, exhale through the mouth. Allow yourself to feel. Draw the knees back up towards the sky. Feet are hip width apart. Right leg extends up towards the ceiling. We'll cross the right leg on top of the left like we're wearing a dress. Sorry guys, but you get the idea. Okay, arms extend out like wings. We're gonna flow in both directions with the right knee on top of the left, okay? So take the knees close to the heart. Now first we're gonna take the knees off to the right and look off towards the left. Roll into the back of that left shoulder. Stay with your breath. back onto your back side, shift the hips to the right a few inches, and then float the knees off to the left. Maybe hold on to that right knee, the left hand, and look over your right shoulder. Inhale, 
the gaze skyward, draw the knees back up, uncross the legs, shift the hips back to neutral. Left leg erects up towards the sky, cross it on top of the right, gaze towards the heart, float the knees off to the left, look off to the right. Shift the hips to the left a few inches so the base of your tailbone is underneath your head. Because the longer the spine, the more you can twist, right? Maybe take the right hand onto that left leg, roll into the back of the left shoulder. Slowly gaze back up at the ceiling, draw the knees back up. Hug them back into your heart, swirl them in one direction three times, massaging the rim of your sacrum, your battery pack, and then the opposite direction. to melt back down onto the earth as you extend your leg long and forward. Lift the heart high, slide the shoulders down. Windshield wiper your feet in and out, in and out until they flow out. Spread your fingers wide like rays of the sun and then just let them naturally contract. Take a nice deep breath in through the nostrils. Exhale through the mouth and no longer control your breath. Just allowing your body to melt into the support of the earth. Taking all the energy that you just created and drawing it into who you are far beyond this physical form. As you continue to relax in this corpse pose, the most important pose of all poses, the Maha pose, perhaps you could visualize two swirling vortexes circling energy, one spiraling around the right foot and one around the left foot. Healing energy flowing up through your toes, through the arches of the feet, into your ankles, flooding up into the shins, expanding into the calves, spiraling open the kneecaps and behind the knees, softening into the quadriceps. Expanding those hamstrings. These swirling energies start to become one. Encompassing your hips, your reproductive organs, gluteals, wrapping around your torso, feeling the, the whole entire back supported by the earth. Just witness how your rib cage spontaneously contracts and expands. How your heart feels in front of you, behind you, above you, below you, and out through the sides of you. Shoulders completely soft. And then these two energies fork off into two again. One down the right shoulder, one down the left your strong biceps and triceps as they soften into the elbows and the forearms and the wrists. The 
pinky fingers, ring fingers, middle fingers, index fingers, and thumbs. Allowing this energy to flow back up to the throat swirling around the throat, like the head is just levitating in liquid light. The nape of the neck softens. The lips, the teeth, the tongue soften. The eyes just sink back into the head, seeing clearly without even looking. The forehead, soft and expansive, opening up your intuition more than ever. Each and every hair follicle softens. As you relax and retreat into this beautiful place of yourself, knowing that there's no one you need to be, nothing you need to do, nowhere you need to go except for right here, right now, absorbing exactly what you need. Turning to your breath. Allow to be enough just to lie here in stillness, breathing. Feel alive. And then allow this healing, nourishing breath to start to reawaken your amazing bodies. Swallowing your saliva, if you feel a little parched, just think of lemons. Wiggling through the toes, through the fingers, just coming back your own unique, special way. Softly, ease and grace though. Maybe extend the arms back behind you. Bring your right hand onto your left shoulder, left hand onto the right shoulder to give yourself well-deserved loving time. Eventually, the knees will bend and your feet root you to the earth. Feel your low back reconnect. The eyes still close. We roll off onto the right-hand side into a fetal position. slide our left leg long and forward and use the assistance of our left arm and our right arm to pull our body, to float our body back up into a comfortable seat. So just allow the spine to grow long, the shoulders to fall away from the ears, the jaw to remain soft, and the breath delicious. In deep gratitude, our hands come together into a prayer. Grateful for everything that we have, especially our health. 
And let's conclude this journey inward with one sound of OM, enunciating the A, the O, and the N. So please exhale and inhale. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you for allowing me to guide you through something as special as yourselves. Matthew? I almost said Friday, it's Sunday.